Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and a patient of mine, Brian, had asked me about uh, getting rid of a hot spot. Well, technically, he didn't have a true hot spot. He just had a red spot to his foot, which, in my opinion, is the beginning of irritation and friction from shoe wear. Now, that could be because of excessively tight drawstring to the shoe, uh, meaning laced shoes. It could be also be from ill-fitting shoes. It could be from a fallen arch. It could be from the type of exercise you do. It could be from very tight calf muscles. Uh, with my hikers that are going with me to Zion this September 13th to 17th, and if you're interested, tomorrow's the last day. So uh, I am training my small group of hikers. So even if you're not going to Zion, please consider signing up for the twice a month training. Next training will be this Saturday, July 2nd at Swallow Cliff Stairs in Palos Hills. So feel more than free to join us. But uh, when you have new boots and you're breaking them in, it is very common to get irritation points because the boots, uh, the leather or the leather substitute can be very tight and unforgiving. And in um, when you're trying to fit shoes, and you have to loosen the leather up, the last, meaning the top up, or break in the rubber or the inserts, uh, you might have a little bit of wear and tear, or you might have to break in that material. And in doing so, uh, especially if you are used to a lot of mileage, you can have some impact over the course of eight miles. We're gonna be doing eight miles, by the way, or hopefully doing eight miles easy pace this Saturday on the second. But with you, when you do that for the first time and you're used to your old shoes, it can cause um, friction. And typically everybody knows of blisters. That's from walking in sandals for the first time on the beach a long distance. Well, that can happen in your boots and that's not what you want with last minute uh, shoe fittings right before a big hike because it's very painful and that will take you out of the hike. But uh, for my friend Brian, the red spot to me, especially to the top of the foot, tells uh, the, is the telltale sign of extensor tendinitis. So before it gets swollen and painful, I would intervene. And that means changing the lacing, maybe working on calf. I'm gonna see what Brian's doing with regards to his activities and make some modifications. But uh, while I'm on trail now, let me just show you of how I would relace the boots or shoes. And I'll have shoes on, I have boots on, but you can kind of figure out what to do with your laces in your sneakers so that you can take the pressure off of the area that's bothering you. All right, so let me switch over. I pre-laced these. So in Brian's case, he has a red spot underneath these boots to the foot right here. Typically that's called the extensor digitorum. It's the tendons that take the extensor muscles or the extensor tendons take the muscle force of the shins, uh, transfer the force into the intent in the insertion points on the extensor halluches or the, the toes. And uh, sometimes if you have this part of your laces too tight, especially if you have uh, very tight arches or you do support, you can rub excessively over the course of several hours. So one thing you can do is take the laces off here, jump this position and go from here to here so there's less pressure. So the, the caveat would be when you have less pressure here, it'd be great for that one area that you're having a friction rub or a hot spot, but you will loosen up the connection so your arches won't be in great contact with your inserts. So if you do have fallen arches, it could be a problem. Uh, in the case, you, you do want to keep these about the same tension as before. You might want to cinch up your ankle boots a little bit tighter because as you loosen this and skip the spot, you might have a little bit more play in the area. And the last thing you wanna do is take care of the hot spot here but cause excessive laxity here where it'll be rubbing. Now, let me show you what I did on the other side to demonstrate that. So in fact, you, you can do this too. If you have an ankle blister forming here, you can skip the ankle part and just have it up top. These are for boots. If you have 
uh, low cut sneakers, you won't be able to do that. But in some of your uh, sneakers, you'll see an extra hole over here, which you can play around with where you put the loops. So bottom line is if you have an area of irritation or blister, early blister formation, or if you've already popped your blister, you can use mole skin, you can pop your blister, you can use petroleum jelly, but skipping the area, and in Brian's case again, skipping the area will take less pressure off but just make sure you bolster up the area afterwards so at least you still have the ankle and it doesn't give you any problems so hopefully that gives you a couple of ideas about how to relace your shoes in case you're on trail in the middle of your hike or if you're trying to break in your shoes and you don't want to skip out on any training you have to get these hot spots or these blisters before they get too big if you have no choice and uh, you've already, you already have the growing blister and it can't fit in your shoe, well, you have no choice. You might have to pop that thing, do it in a sterile fashion, soap and water if you have it, uh, clean pin, and then maybe moleskin on top of that. If, I'll probably have to do a video on moleskin, moleskin or petroleum jelly, because at that point in time, when you take off your shoe, you're not going to be able to get it back on. So as a rule of thumb, if you ever have an injury, never take off your shoe because you'll never get it back on. You'll be stuck in wilderness without a shoe. So hopefully that gives you a couple of ideas. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section down below. If you have taken care of hot spots on your own, oh, uh, I'll put them in there too. But one more thing, because some shoes don't work out, you'll have to return them. I don't know if Sierra Trading Post uh, allows it, but REI is really good if you become a co-op member. I forget the fee annually, but it's nominal because you can return boots used and you can actually buy used boots if you're on a budget up to, a, I think, a year. So uh, I even had a GoPro that I didn't realize there was a problem with it, but after one year, the spot that was on my field of vision, I, I, on all the pictures, I said, hey, I didn't realize this. Can I return it? They took the full return and gave me credit in the store for another GoPro, which was the next model next year. So I really like REI's um, conditions. Think about joining and being a co-op member. Um, thank you for watching. If you are available Saturday, please come out, but you'll have to let me know. Otherwise, we're leaving you behind. So thanks. Stay healthy. Get outside and hike. Talk to you in the next video.